What's up, YouTube? My name is Rudy, and welcome to Let's Play Children of a Dead Earth. Today we are doing the Jovian Lunar Tour, an extremely difficult campaign mission, as they all are these days. I am uh, doing some post-commentating on this mission because it just takes way too long to do it as I'm doing the mission. Like, this mission probably took me two hours to do, and there's no way I'd be able to talk for two hours and keep things interesting, and then have to cut out 90% of it. So... We need to travel to Europa and Io and destroy the enemies there. In order to do that, we first need to escape from Callisto, our starting moon, and enter into the Jovian system proper. Then we will set Europa as a frame of reference, and that's going to be our first destination. There are probably, certainly, of course, many ways of doing this mission, but I chose to go to Europa first, then to the Lagrange point to refuel, and then I went off to Io. And I, yep. So, here I'm just fiddling with my maneuver node to try and actually get to Europa. I mean, you'll notice that I, after I left Callisto, I, I did not do my first maneuver until a little, till a couple hours after that. And then at the orbital node, then further on, on my journey, I'm making some correction burns to get my trajectory nice and even with Europa and then I'm using tangential to bring myself in even closer. It's important to make sure that you approach these moons from the proper side so that you will be orbiting in the same direction as the enemy fleet. And so here you can see I tried to match the fleet, but I did not have enough delta V. In fact, it would have been more than five kilometers per second of delta V. So some more tweaking would allow me to inject myself into Europa at a much lower delta V cost, and that's what I'm attempting to do here now. And I'm making some progress, but there's still a bit more to do. But yes, and Jupiter is a very interesting planet indeed, especially the moon system. What with Galileo having discovered the moons of Jupiter, all those centuries ago, and after that happened, everything changed, really. I mean, that sort of introduced this preposterous notion that not everything revolves around the Earth, because, I mean, if Jupiter has satellites, maybe Earth is just a satellite. Of course, there was plenty of things going on to suggest that the Earth wasn't the center of the universe, but the discovery of the moons of Jupiter was just one of those. And so... It looks like I sort of got a trajectory that I was happy with, but I haven't actually created the burn to put myself around Europa quite yet. I'm actually just, at this point I was getting impatient and I was eager to just get underway. So now I'm hurtling through the Jovian system approaching Europa. At some point I'm going to need to refuel because uh, we have the gunship and the small methane tanker. Okay, so now I'm approaching Europa and I'm going to actually make my uh, final burn to try and get actually into orbit around Europa and not just completely miss it. So, I mean, here you can just burn tangentially to slow yourself down and hopefully Europa will suck you in and that's exactly what's going on here. And just a bit more tweaking to get things nice and, nice and right. And that's going to be about... 2.34 kilometers per second of delta V, which isn't bad. And once I get into Europa, I believe I'm going to use my small methane tanker to refuel myself. And yes, I mean, earlier... Okay, there we go. Now I'm refueling the gunship with the methane tanker. And we have arrived... So I think, uh, yeah, I split the gunship from the methane tanker, because, of course, methane tankers don't make great combat ships. Uh, and it's certainly too expensive to be a decoy. Too valuable. I mean, this, that methane tanker is what makes this mission possible. So now I'm trying to arrange an intercept with the enemy fleet. But at this point, I mean, I mean, one, one place where this game really breaks down is just the endless cycle of interception and evasion that you get into with the enemy. You know... You're only losing small percentages of delta V every single time you make one of these interactions, but it just takes forever. Too much, too much clicking is involved in this game, I think. If there was a way to do all this with less clicking, that'd be great. 
but you cannot. Maybe in a future version. So yeah, look at all these evasions that keep on happening. Eventually, I decide, maybe, I'll use some of my flak missiles. But that turns out to be not as good either. Mm -hmm. So, I'm being frustrated and taking a nice brief look at the moon. And so here are my flak missiles also having a hard time trying to get the interception. Stupid moons of Jupiter. This is all Galileo's fault, maybe, actually, now that I think about it. Because if we never even knew about Jupiter and the moons, this game might not even exist, actually. We'd still be living in, in a pre-scientific revolution times with no scientific method. So yeah, I got an intercept with my missiles, finally, and they just sort of uh, did that, and I was more than thrilled. Sometimes if you get lucky, you can actually get the enemy fleet to crash into Europa. That happened on my first playthrough, and I wish I had been recording then, because that, that was hilarious. And then these missiles just died out, because they ran out of Delta V. And now I'm using my gunship to try and get an interception. And I think I, I'm able to get this interception in one or two tries. Of course there's an evasion, multiple evasions. And we did not make it, but what about the dastardly United Trade Alliance fleet? They're very good at evasion, I guess. I suppose I would evade too if there was a massive gunship barreling down upon me. So we got my gunship targeting the two enemy marauders. I'm not even sure what the purpose of the marauder class ship is. I was just told to destroy it. I notice they have like a big gun mounted on the front. I'm not sure what it does. I guess it's maybe a coil gun. And here comes in our massive barrage of rail guns and coil guns. And these ships and these ships melt like butter. And we create quite a show for all the people on Europa at night. a tendril of death, fiery death, a tongue of fire. And so now we're done at Europa. Suddenly we feel kind of lonely at Europa. We have no no one to, to fight with, so it's time to be on our way. So the at this point I'm trying to actually meet back up with the methane tanker, but I'm not really able to do it, and I can't set the methane tanker as my frame of reference for some reason, much to my disgust. So Eventually, I just say to myself, okay, I think I'll probably send both these ships to the Lagrange point on their own, and then they can meet up there and refuel. I mean, you could probably, I mean, you could abandon the methane tanker and just go to Io with your gunship, or refuel at the, meth, at the uh, Lagrange point and then go to Io, but you don't want to do that because you're going to need more fuel. Like, after the whole Europa fiasco, you need to make sure that your methane tanker has enough fuel to get to the Lagrange point, which is what I'm attempting to do right now with the gunship, the green square there. It's the, uh, the Europa Jupiter Lagrange point where they have a methane depot stationed. Because you're, you're going to need that methane tanker for going to Io. You know, I mean, the gunship has plenty of Delta V to get to Io, but without the methane tanker to refuel, you're not going to be able to get into orbit around Io. I mean, you might be able to, but you're not going to have enough Delta V left for maneuvers and combat after that. So you definitely need your methane tanker. I think uh, I think I read it read in one of Carl Sagan's book this idea that the fact that we were able to actually look into the heavens and see things like Jupiter and figure out that Jupiter actually has moons is what helped to spur on the discovery of science, of the scientific method, and other methodologies for learning about the environment. It all starts with that observation of the heavens, and his idea was that if, suppose, we were on some clouded planet, I think he used Venus as an example of somehow intelligent life developed on Venus. Without, their, without being able to observe the sky, they might never develop science, because they would not because like the, the sky is like this great laboratory of math going on that we can look at and learn. 
And I mean, all science starts with observations and so much came out of what we learned by looking up into the night sky, so much mathematical, mathematics and physics and everything. I mean, not everything, but a lot of stuff. And so, yeah, we're at the methane depot having a nice break, refueling, giving the crew something to do other than waiting. But now there's going to be a whole lot more waiting for them as we get back onto our grand tour. It's not really a grand tour, I suppose. We're only going to two moons. We started at one moon and we went to a Lagrange point, actually. Not everyone can say they've been to a Lagrange point. In fact, I don't think anyone can say that. Maybe, maybe some Apollo astronauts, I don't know. So at this point, I'm, talk I'm gonna talk about some phase angles right here. Now, I noticed that if the Lagrange point and Io are at a 90 degree angle with uh, Jupiter acting as the corner, then you can make a burn from the Lagrange point and get to Io. So you need a 90 degree phase angle and you can just wait pretty, it doesn't take too long to get the proper phase angle. And so I have an orbit. You can see that I'm coming into Io on the wrong side if you follow the, the, my mouse pointer tracing it. And so now I'm just making some more adjustments to try and get things nice and smooth. Then I'm going to make another burn, a secondary burn at the orbital node so I can match the plane of Io and uh, just make burning tangentially so I can get in there at a, a reasonable speed so I'm able to slow down and stop myself. So this is not looking bad at all. So things are looking pretty good. It's telling me that I don't have enough Delta V, but that's kind of a lie. I just need to refuel myself. So I'm on my way. And now I'm going to refuel my ship. And thankfully, the methane tanker still has enough fuel in it. So after I do get into orbit around Io, I can top off my tanks one last time and then leave the methane tanker for, uh, you know, just whatever. Someone else can come pick it up later. I mean, I guess it's kind of rude of us because the methane tanker is being lent to us by another faction and it's common courtesy to return it with a full tank of methane. So I guess we're going to have to send the ship out there to retrieve it at some point. Or whatever, maybe it's just not our problem. I mean, we are the Republic of Free People after all. We can do whatever the hell we want because we're free. So yeah, we'll leave the methane tanker behind. We'll pick him up later. And so at this point, this is the same, I ran into the same type of uh, BS that I was having at Europa with trying to intercept the enemy. I tried using missiles. The missiles were, didn't really do much. I got an interception, but the missiles just, well, you'll see. So yeah, just burning, adjusting tangentially and everything, setting up an intercept and they're off. And they evaded, of course. Interception, evasion. Interception, evasion, and by miracle we actually make it. And there's mighty Jupiter. So, I was pretty optimistic at this point, or I am pretty optimistic. They're firing some lasers, but they only managed to take out a few missiles. And, uh, oh, look at that, they just all missed. It, it was, I was thrilled by that. So then I'm like, okay, well I'm out of missiles. Let's just go kill him with the gunship. Uh, I mean, they got some pretty, they pack some pretty heavy firepower though. They got 11 millimeter rail guns too, and some cannons. So, I mean, the gunships can take a beating, but you know, I, I would hate to get like a lucky or an unlucky shot that just takes out like the crew compartment or all my radiators and then I have to do all this nonsense over again. So yeah, eventually I make it into combat with the enemy. Uh, looking at the enemy fleet, I know some of their ships, especially the, the Corsair, I think it is, has a uh, rail gun. So I want to target those rail guns and take those out. And also I want to take out the green lasers on the cutter. And so if I, because I want to take those out, I mean, sure, the gunship has plenty of armor, but... Space combat can be pretty brutal and pretty quick. So they're firing their rail guns. I'm actually not quite in range yet because their ships are smaller than me. And here I'm like, like shit, I'm losing all these radiators. But thankfully I got some radiators on the other side, shielded. 
and I'm allowed to continue firing. Like if I lose those that those one set of radiators, then I'm done for. And uh, my ship doesn't seem to want to target the Corsair with the railguns, even though I've explicitly targeted those railguns. So I just continue taking a beating, but my armor holds out, and I to say I I mean I disable the missile schooner first. I guess the ship just concentrated on it because it's the biggest ship, even though it's not the biggest threat. Now I'm finally hitting the Corsair, giving it a taste of its own medicine, and uh, it does not like it one bit, and we disabled it, and the enemies are no longer a threat. But wait, there's more. There's still a stupid missile fleet we need to take out if we want to actually win the mission. At this point, I'm like, what the hell? I just want to go home, even though I am home playing the game, I just want to get up from my computer, because I've been at this for like two hours already, <laughs> and finally I intercept the fleet easily enough, and they are destroyed. They mostly destroy themselves. My name was Rudy, and this was the Jovian Lunar Tour. Thank you for watching, hit that Here thumbs up, and consider subscribing, and I hope this video helps you out with this mission. Good luck.